Today is Holy Monday of Holy Week, and today we continue the journey to the cross. Yesterday we heard the story of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. But today things are going to be a little quieter. We're going to enter a scene that is intimate. We're going to enter the home of Lazarus. Martha and Mary, three of Jesus's beloved friends. You might recall that Lazarus is the friend that Jesus just raised from the dead. And unlike the other gospels where this story also occurs or similar stories, the woman who anoints Jesus's feet is known. She's not a stranger. Jesus is actually incredibly close to Mary, but also to her siblings, Martha and Lazarus. This is their home where this story takes place. A reading from John, the 12th chapter. Six, day, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for Jesus. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that it might, she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had just raised from the dead. So the chief priest planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The intimacy and friendship of this space is something we should notice right away. I want you to think about the last time you went to the home of someone you are close to. What does it feel like to be with people who know you well, who love you, and who you feel a special connection with? That's exactly what is going on here. Because this story follows the raising of Lazarus from the dead, it is clear that these two stories are connected. Now Mary definitely wants Jesus to know and feel the gratitude she has for him raising her brother from the dead. But there's more than just that happening here, friends. We know that because, we know that because Judas opens his mouth and he makes this comment about the perfume Mary uses on Jesus' feet. Nard was a very expensive plant. Absurdly expensive, in fact. 300 denarii, Judas says. That's 300 days worth of wages. Almost a year. This plant comes from India, so it must have traveled a very far distance to get to Bethany. All of these things tell us about the abundance of this act. 
And friends, we can't help but also think about a, another foot washing that will take place after this one. The one we're going to hear about in just a few days. The one on Monday, Thursday. Done by Jesus for his disciples. So these stories are also completely connected as well. Both are acts of extravagant love and service. They both tell us what it means to follow Jesus, what it looks like to follow him, how we are to follow Jesus. Like Mary, our lives are grateful responses to the love and grace of God. Like Mary, we are to live our lives expressing love and service to others extravagantly and without limitations. As we journey with Jesus to the cross this week, I want you to think about God's extravagant love and grace for you. It's more than we can imagine. It's more than we even deserve. And then I want you to imagine how you can respond to this love and service, this love and grace and service to others. There are opportunities every day. There are opportunities everywhere. Your life has been impacted by the story of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. So how will you respond and impact the lives of others? Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, your son chose the path that led to pain before joy and to the cross before glory. Plant his cross in our hearts so that in its power and love we may come at last to joy and glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.